The next piece of equipment that I'm going to demonstrate is called a scoop stretcher. And um, I wanted to show you, uh, this is a stretcher that will actually separate into two different pieces. Um, this one is also made of uh, plastics. It's not met they have some made out of metal, metal that you cannot uh, put through x-rays, but this one's plastic so you can uh, keep them uh, on this and put them through x-rays if you needed to. Uh, one of the, the two attachments are up here at the top and down at the bottom, and then there's also some uh, leg adjustments which we'll show on, on uh, shortly. Um, but with each of these um, attachments, there's a little uh, push pin uh, and hook in the middle. So you want to push that down and that'll unhook it. And then you can slide the um, scoop stretcher apart into its two pieces. Okay, again, you can do it one at the top and one at the bottom. And then to put it together, you're just going to put it in there and then it'll lock back in place. Okay. So again, you push down to disconnect, push it together to secure it. Okay. So next, we're going to demonstrate how to use the scoop stretcher on the victim. There you go. So with our victim, we have already applied the cervical collar. He's in a supine position. We know that we're going to be using the scoop stretcher. So again, I would use whatever symbol that I need. Uh, for uh, my two rescuers, bring the scoop stretcher and again I would maintain my uh, inline stabilization just like before um, supporting the, the sides of the heads and um, with this one they're going to disconnect um, the feet and they're going to disconnect the head attachment, the metal piece again by pushing the button. Then the next they're going to lengthen the board and there's a little um, adjusting it at the head. They're trying to put the, the top of the, the head piece uh, at the top of the head. And then with the bottom, uh, hold, go ahead and move out of the way there a second. Go ahead and do that again, George. So the, there's a little yellow button down at, by the knees. That's going to be pushed over to the side and that'll release the um, adjustment for the, the legs, so now we can uh, pull down on the, on the legs, and this will adjust down to just below the feet. And the, there's, uh, this can be adjusted into increments of about four, four inches uh, for, e for each lock. So again, you heard that one cl click, and the other one is already adjusted to the same length, okay, and, th and they've made sure of that. And they're both on each side of the body. So the next what they're going to do is they're going to slide, slide them both. They're going to put the hands together across the chest, on the stomach. Okay, and I'm going to move this to the, to the person as closely as possible. And again, sometimes you have to be a little bit careful because when it, this does lock, it can, or comes together, it can pinch the victim a little bit. But again, that's a little bit better than having a cervical or a spine injury. And again, the nice thing about using the scoop stretcher is that we don't have to do the log roll like we did with the, um, the other spine boards. And again, we're just moving this as closely as possible to lock it. And then you heard the clicks. And again, they're just checking each, the head and the um, attachments to make sure that they're locked, checking the legs to make sure that those are locked, and then we're, we are, um, again, if we had our head immobilizer on here, uh, we, can, we would put that on um, to strap them on. Um, or if we just wanted to move them, if we had a different scenario where we just, we didn't have a spine injury, we would put this on there, and then we could, um, again, have two to, two to four people um, uh, move them. So with our, our knees bent, 
Again, on the count of three, we're going to lift. Ready? One, two, three. Okay, and then we can just walk away to, or we can also place them on a regular backboard or to, or to the ambulance. 